With only three months left to the end of the Brexit transition period, the European Union seemed to be as united as ever. Not. Uh, they're basically the, the majority of the member states in Europe are kicking off because France and Emmanuel Macron are obsessed with uh, getting access, free access to UK waters and fisheries, essentially stealing our fish. Uh, now they are sending a strong message and a signal to the EU Commission and Michel Barnier's uh, negotiation team uh, to tell Macron to calm down because it's all getting out of hand. Uh, the latest that we have on this issue is that France is under a mounting pressure from other European states who want to let uh, Michel Barnier drop the EU's hardline fishing demands. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about what Paris are doing and also how the EU Commission have also lost control uh, completely when it comes to certain countries that they have, especially in the East. Uh, and also, Guy Verhofstadt is also crying a bit because, you know, it's Wednesday, he's got nothing else to do, that's what's happening. Now, the response is um, that Paris and the, the, obviously Emmanuel Macron's palace uh, are not going to be giving up. They're, they're just going to keep going with their the demand uh, because for them, all the other regulations and stand, standards that they have, it's not really a concern when it comes to other products because they are worried about their fishermen. Uh, because if Macron loses their vote, then he'll be in a lot of trouble. Now, the situation is that the row has erupted after a meeting of EU envoys uh, this week with representatives from non-coastal states warning Brussels that it's been uh, too strict because for them, it's not really a priority. Uh, they are ready to accept that we as Britain will take back control of our waters and want to use the a 4.6 billion pound emergency fund to compensate the European fishermen. Firstly, that emergency fund uh, is, you know, for the European, well, the economic crisis, that was supposed to be used for something else, but now they want to use it to bribe the fishermen in Europe. Uh, one of the diplomats from Brussels has said that we know that our position is totally unrealistic. Yeah, I know. But so is the British one. I don't understand. So the UK voted to leave to become a self, you know, obviously a sovereign country and have self-determination uh, and to be independent. The UK wanting to have independence over their water. That's so unrealistic, guys. So unrealistic. Uh, we need to get to the point where there is a more mature dialogue. It's not that complicated. Yeah, that's what we said. It's not supposed to be complicated. You have borders, you have territories, and, and this is supposed to be negotiations to get a free trade agreement. Not, not any of this. You can't just randomly get access to waters because it's not, most of you know, this is not the main game. They have a different agenda and they're using all this as an excuse. Now, another EU source and diplomat has said that the European Union will have to soften its position. We should not just limit ourselves to the interests of a few states. Uh, one of the British um, officials have also said that we've been clear uh, that we won't accept any proposals which compromise UK sovereignty over our fishing waters. In order to make progress, the EU must accept our position as an independent coastal state and any agreement on quotas must reflect that reality. Uh, we remain committed to working hard to reach an agreement by the middle of October. So this is obviously Boris and David Frost setting a deadline, uh, which is basically about a couple of weeks left uh, for the EU to decide. And after that, uh, the UK government will either say, there's no agreement, where we now have about a month and a half, two months and a half to, to, to go uh, for no deal Brexit to be ready, or there's an agreement, fine. Let's actually sign a free trade deal. At this point, it's unlikely that that will happen the trade deal because Macron is being a child. Now, the issue we have, no one actually knows who's in charge. Is it Ursula? Is it, uh, you know, Macron? Is it Angela Merkel? Uh, and, uh, or is it the actual European Council? You know, is it all the actual ministers and uh, prime ministers of various countries uh, that get together and discuss things for hours and hours without achieving anything? The whole problem, this is exposing the EU's biggest flaw. And that's why Brexit happened. And that's why we as Brexiteers want Brexit for the whole of continents, all the countries. Because when you have one state, France, for example, or the Netherlands, being obsessed with fisheries. And uh, for example, Poland doesn't really care because it's not really coastal and it's not really a neighbor uh, to the UK. This is a problem. 
every country has different requirements, different cultures and different needs. Stop it. Now, at the same time, as you know, the last uh, few weeks, uh, this massive row has been happening in the UK because Boris Johnson and David Frost come up with the Internal Market Bill, which is a bill that's supposed to be uh, used as a deterrent in case the EU uh, break their own obligation of this treaty. Um, but obviously, if you enforce it, then they say that the UK will be breaking international law because it wants to protect the whole of the Union. So Northern Ireland would not be separate, a separate nation, essentially, and the rest of the country. Now, this bill has now passed in uh, the House of Commons, 84 majority. Uh, so Boris Johnson has a majority of 80 and uh, obviously add four to it. So we got eight, 84 majority thanks to the DUP and a number of others who vote, voted with the government because we have a list of uh, conservative MPs who didn't vote for this bill. But on the plus side, there are no Tory MPs who voted against it. Uh, but there's a list of them, including a couple of ministers like Grant Shapps and I think Matt Hancock, uh, who abstained. But in th on that list of people who abstained, there's one famous name. Theresa May, former Prime Minister who failed to deliver Brexit. She decided not to support Boris Johnson, which is you know, showing her, her own hypocrisy, especially when it comes to international law, the way she's dealt with it in the past. Uh, now... Uh, she decided not to do it. She's becoming a, a bit of a rebel, a quiet rebel, you know, because she's not that loud, because uh, we are basically replaying what's been happening, what was happening a few decades ago with Ted Heath and Margaret Thatcher when he was in the backbenchers and it was just sulking and sulking and crying. Um, and But it doesn't really matter because uh, Boris has got what he wants and uh, things are changing. The situation in Europe is getting worse and worse because uh, David Frost uh, obviously delivered the proposals that we have. Gave them five options, five different proposals for Brexit, for this trade deal. And Brussels, Michel Barnier, rejected all of them. We gave them everything. Firstly, this Canada-style trade deal that everyone keeps talking about, it was Michel Barnier's idea. It, was, it came from the European Union and obviously Brexiteers like David Davis and others actually backed it anyway. And now it's, it's all changing. So I don't understand the, the, the point of uh, the EU just saying no to everything that keep com keeps coming and uh, happening because they were the ones who were supposed to be aiming for a trade deal and now they've become the obstacles. So the situation is that uh, David Frost obviously handed over these new five proposals uh, which included on you know, issues on subsidies, state subsidies, fishing opportunities, uh, but... Uh, Obviously, Michel Barnier, uh, according to the EU sources, uh, has said that, well, there are outstanding issues, so we can't really accept anything. Are you kidding me? Uh, this is completely childish. Now, in the middle of all this, Ursula von der Leyen and the EU Commission have also lost control <laughs> over their members. We've got nine countries who are rejecting this new uh, rule of law uh, proposal, which is based on law proceedings and how uh, their countries are being treated in Europe. Uh, and especially with the whole row between um, Hungary and uh, Brussels. Uh, so this is a thing where certain countries, including Poland as well, who want to have their own sovereignty and they have their own, obviously, procedures. Uh, but the European Commission say that, well, you can't. You have to obviously go with what we say. You have to harmonize everything, you, you, you know, your legality, your sovereignty, your democracy. And if you govern your country in a way that we don't like, even if your people voted for it, we don't like it. You have to change your behavior. It's not a good look. So the commission have now published its first report on the rule of law proceedings uh, and in member states, namely Poland, Hungary, Sweden, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Austria, Luxembourg and Holland. Uh, and they're, they've all obviously called for tougher rule of law proceedings and rejected the council's draft text. And but at the same time, uh, the EU ambassadors <laughs> have proceeded to start negotiations over the budget in the EU Parliament, which is going to start in October. Guy Verhofstadt is kicking off because he's finally realised what Brexit is all about. So on the issue of um, countries deciding, especially what's happening in Belarus and sanctions, he tweeted that the UK and Canada have now imposed their own sanctions uh, and while well, the EU is still unable to decide. <laughs> Unanimity is killing the EU. 
Oh, I thought that was the you. What was about in the EU? Uh, <laughs> your union and your the way you obviously debate things for days and weeks and months without actually achieving anything. This is what you wanted. So I'm not really sure if Giva Hoshad is now in, in this tweet uh, supporting Brexit and sovereignty, or is he actually aiming to you know, promote proper dictatorship <laughs> and authoritarianism? Because in this bit, it is funny because uh, Hungary and uh, Orban sent a letter to the EU complaining to von der Leyen. Giva Hoshad said, my advice to uh, von der Leyen uh, is on this Orban letter. Bin it. My advice to Orban, when respect and democracy are being discussed, zip it. All right, so this is funny. Respect. He's talking about respect. And then he says, bin it and zip it. Respect, yeah? Same guy who insulted Brexiteers. Respect. Democracy. Where is your democracy, Guy Verhofstadt? Where is your democracy, the European Union? You don't have any of that. So, in the words of Guy Verhofstadt, Guy, zip it. <laughs> uh, so, this is the whole problem that we have with the European Union. They can't even control their own member states, let alone negotiate with a new one. Well, with a well, independent nation in that sense. So, this is what the latest update that we have for you guys. Uh, we are going to be uh, publishing another video um, after this, uh, either later tonight or tomorrow on what's been happening in the UK Parliament on the the lockdown emergency measures because um, the Speaker of the Commons did not uh, select uh, the rebels amendment uh, and uh, by the time you watch this the vote has already happened and uh, so I'm guessing that the government has won that vote unless it's some sort of miracle they lose the vote but I think they should be winning winning the votes and but they promised to introduce more compromise uh, some sort of compromise uh, but i'll keep you guys posted on what's actually happening in parliament on that issue as well uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and support the channel by becoming a member and i'm mytc i'll see you guys in the next video